Please rise in respect for Christ and the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for today is recorded in John chapter 15, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, o Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. We will continue on to talk about what it is to be a disciple, someone who follows Jesus. And we've talked about kind of the, the big theme line, which is a, a disciple is someone who knows, follows, and shares Jesus and makes disciples of others. So knows, follows, and shares. And we talked about knowing Jesus for a couple of weeks, and then we got into what it is to follow Jesus. Last week, a big part of that following was talking about the cost. There is a cost to following Jesus. That whole picking up your cross, sharing the gospel, what it means to be connected to him, and, and knowing that there is a price. He paid the first price. He paid it, but then we also are brought along in because he says, I need you to pick up your cross too and follow me. One of the examples that we had of that, a literal example of that, was this last week, or is it next week? I lose track. Of, of Jesus carrying his cross. And, and they enlisted a man called uh, uh, Simon of Cyrene to help him carry it. A real literal vision of carrying that cross. We also are there on the ground, probably with him, helping pick up that cross. But notice who was next to him? Jesus was. And who's carrying all, really, all the weight? Jesus is. We're just connected to him. And that is what our life is, is a disciple, a follower of Jesus, because we are connected and moving alongside of him. And not just the side <laughs> with him within us, because we are connected to him. And so I'm looking at some of these passages for this morning, and they all are talking about what it means to be abiding, being having a life in Jesus, connected to him. And of course, the key part of how we are connected into Jesus is how we are connected in by his word. Essentially, the word, the sacraments, are the things that connect us into Jesus. Baptism, the first and primary way in which we are connected into Jesus and have a life in him and him connected to us. His word that continues to be an ongoing part of our lives also is how we remain connected into Jesus. The sacraments that we share, the body and blood of Christ, also connecting us into the life of Jesus is a follower of him. He works with inside of us to help us to be able to follow. Great passage to, today. I'm the vine, you're the branches, and we'll talk about that in a second. But 
is following Jesus all through the Bible as a disciple all through the Bible. One of the first readings I picked for today was Joshua. Good old Joshua. As for me and my house, we're going to serve you, Lord. We're going to not follow the other pagan gods. We're going to follow you. But you know how it always starts, though? It's not us saying we're going to follow God. It's God grabbing hold of us and saying, let's go. Think about that for a second. Our natural nature is not to follow, not to abide, not to remain in, not to stay connected to Jesus, is it? Our natural nature is to run the other direction. God is always the one that comes after us. He comes for us. He came for his children in Egypt. He led them out of there by the hand of Moses. And, and by Moses' hand, he took them all the way to the river of Jordan. And it was time to cross, but even Moses was not able to cross. Because he failed at one point in his following God. And that's a nice reminder to us. There's no way that we can on our own follow God. Jesus is the only one that perfectly follows the Father, keeps the will of the Father, and they can lead us into the promised land. Now, he did pick up the, 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 the line with Joshua. And our passage is out of the first chapter of Joshua, and it's where he gets Joshua and says, Joshua, time to go. I'm going to lead you, but here's kind of the conditions we're going to work under. I need you to stay in my word. My words are what's going to lead you and empower you. Let me look at that for a second. First, he gives him this, this big mandate. Be strong and courageous. He says that multiple times here. Be strong and courageous. Now, when it comes to us being strong and courageous, that is not a natural thing within us to be strong and courageous. Again, it's through who Joshua is going to be connected to. And how God would connect to him. For you shall cause his people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. A God who keeps his word. Only be strong and very courageous. Being careful to do according to the law that Moses, my command, my servant commanded. So what's that courageousness first to be doing? Being engaged in God's word. That's where we become courageous. And the source of our, our ability to be bold and, and to step out there and be courageous and so forth is going to find its roots in God's Word. It finds its roots in Jesus. That's where we become bold and courageous. Do not turn to the right hand or the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Stay focused on my Word. As a matter of fact, Look at it, think about it, morning, noon, and night. Think about my word. Why? Why do we need morning, noon, and night? Who is working on us morning, noon, and night to not remain faithful, to not remain connected to God? The three big evils I just talked about in the proclamation Satan, the world, and our flesh. Those three things are, are dramatic evils that are constantly working against us. And I think, for me personally, the biggest challenge is that last one. I mean, this is so easy not to remain faithful because one of the things that, that, that deviates us off are good things. Think about that for a second. One of Satan's great tools are good things. I mean, you would think that normally it's bad things that detour us. And those do too. We have a flesh that, that will wander off with the bad things. The lust that takes us places we shouldn't go. Human nature, that's what we do, unfortunately. That is part of the battle. 
I got to thinking, you know, most of the people that get detoured off and have a hard time staying connected are good things. <laughs> Is the rest you need on Sunday morning a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> we all need rest. Work six days out of the week, we do. We work our normal five and work really hard on number six. Because that's when we're home to do everything. We're worn out. Then the next day, need my rest. Rest a good thing? Yes. Yeah, we can talk ourselves into that. Work itself. Is that a good thing? Is that a blessing? Absolutely. To have it, that's a good thing. Can it get in the way of God? Yeah, if that becomes the number one thing, then it's no longer a good thing. Other people, relationships, and so forth. Our time, our battle with our time. We're not scheduling evil into our days, are we? No. But are we scheduling a lot of other things? A lot of things that are good things? Sure. Sure. But some of those good things, do those edge out things like prayer, time in God's Word? See, we all struggle with that. Self-included, and that's my job. It's kind of nice that it's my job. It does help me do it a little bit more. But, see, it's all those good things that Satan will use to edge out. I don't need to speak to this group too much in, in, in regard to some of these other things, but uh, say your child is really talented in sports or academics or whatever else. Those are good things, right? How many of those things become a priority and become number one over God, worship, spending time with the Word of God? See, Satan works very hard to detour us. <clears throat> it is by God's grace we're brought in, and it is by God's grace he continues to help us do the things we need to do. But he does want us following, being connected, and he wonderfully does the connecting. I want to look at uh, John 15. I'm the vine, you're the branches. This is a wonderful passage. Not sure exactly when Jesus shared this. This is part of the Passion evening. This is uh, Monday, Thursday, Thursday evening before he's crucified. And he shares this somewhere in there. We don't know if it's still at the meal or if he's on the way to Gethsemane. But John reports this is all part of that evening. Part of that. All the information Jesus was giving his disciples to get them ready for what would come. I am the true vine. Notice he uses the word true. Oh, the other uh, passage that I tagged on to this that I have here is John 8, 31. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A theme of John's truth. Jesus is the word of truth. So, true vine, he says. My father is the vine dresser. He's the one in charge here of this operation. He's the one in charge of the garden, taking care of everything. Father who speaks the word of life into creation. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He just starts out right off the bat. If you end up being like that branch over there, it is taken away. It's done. This is one of the passages that we as a church do not teach, once saved, always saved. That is a theology out there, but it's not supported by the Bible. You can come to faith, you can reject that faith, you can not stay in God's word, you can spiritually die, and you can be cut off and thrown away. Every, let's see, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Yes, it's not easy to stay a follower, a disciple of Jesus. 
Hebrews chapter 12 talks about this. God whom he loves disciplines. In other words, he prunes us. Part of the pruning is, is that Romans chapter 5, tribulation, perseverance, things that you go through, the hard things in life. And God uses those things to help us build character and hope and, and faith in him. He uses those things. That's the benefit. Satan uses his things to destroy us and to bring us down. God uses his hand to help us to become stronger and build us up, make us more fruitful. And then this next verse is important. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Clean is a good uh, synonym for justification. You're justified. You've been made right. You've been made clean. In other words, you are saved because of the word you've already heard. That's gospel. That's justification. Okay? Which means that's God's work on his side of the fence. In other words, I've gotten you where you need to be in a relationship with me. I've gotten you where you are saved, where you are righteous, you are holy, you are connected to me. All right? So we have that. That's the gospel. And remember, uh, let's see. Abide in me and I in you, that's a dual relationship that is taking place there. Now remember, uh, I've given you all this law stuff, all right? I mean, this whole follow, disciple, etc. that's a lot of law. And I always have to preface this with the gospel because it's law, third use, sanctification. In other words, the only way that we can live and, and, and keep God's word to remain and abide is through the gospel, through the help of Jesus. We are not capable without him. So Jesus is our power. He is our encouragement. He, that's why he says, meditate on me. Be in my word. That's where you are rooted and find your strength. Because a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, and unless it abides, abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And I looked, I went back and I've looked at this before. I always look at that word abide and, and try to see if there's any great thing in that word abide. You know what the real Greek word there is? a very simple word. It just means remain. So you look back to a lot of the original translations, it just says to remain. To remain in me, here's what you got to do. And I think sometimes they don't use it because there's duplication in the grammar there. But remain in me and I in you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. So we have to remain in Jesus. If anyone does not, Remain in me. He is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the, they're gathered, thrown in the fire, and burn. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. We find ourselves within the Word of God. And I don't have to tell you that doesn't mean the crazy, I, I want an ice cream cone and a pony. You know, we all understand that's not what he says when they ask for what you wish, but we do understand. That, that it, it means when I am connected to Jesus by faith, I'm praying in the Spirit, and, I, and, and we do. I, and all honestly, when we are praying to God, we're saying, Thy will be done. Because we don't always, most of the time, never, do we know exactly what we need. But the Father does. But we do know things that we can pray for with confidence. And that we can lay on, 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 on the step of his throne. And we can come boldly there, as he tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, come boldly to the throne of grace for help in time of need. We do boldly lay those prayers before God and faith and look for him to answer them and to care for us and to do what is needed. But this is. Uh, but this, my father, by this, my father's glorified that you bear much fruit and prove.
you to be my disciples. We're going to talk more about that next week. But our evidence of, of being a disciples is our connection to God's word and following and remaining in that word. And that's part of the evidence of who we are. Other people will see who we are and see the truth by how we follow that truth and live in it. Again, something we can't do except by the grace and the help of God. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. That's what Jesus came to do, was to abide in the Father's will, keep his commandments on our behalf. Because he has kept God's commandments on our behalf and took our punishment on our behalf, we have life in him. We're connected to him as our Savior and the one who gives us life. A big part of that discipleship, being in God's Word, taking communion. And another one is prayer. That's a big We see this all the time. That we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, find ourselves in need of and in prayer. We see that here as we pray for each other. Colossians. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, when we pray for you. Paul, always praying for the church, always praying for his people. As we always offer. To, to be praying for each other. I need to be always praying for you. And what are we praying? You know, since we've uh, heard of your faith in Jesus, the love you have for all the saints, in other words, we see the evidence that you are God's disciples, his followers. Because as his followers, we're seeing God's love at work within you. We see his faith at work in you. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed the whole world is bearing fruit and is in, and increasing. Again, where is the strength of all of this? The gospel. What's the gospel? The good news that Jesus suffered, died, and rose for our sins. That's the truth. That's the message. That's the good news that empowers us to walk and to live following Jesus. Which has come to you, indeed, the whole world is bearing fruit and increasing, as it does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. See, it's God's grace and truth that continues to empower us as his disciples. That's why we're here. That's why we come in these doors on Sunday. So that we can hear, yes, I messed up again. I'm not doing a real good job in this area, this area, this area of my life as a follower of Jesus. Lord, will you forgive me? Yes. You hear that forgiveness. Will you help me? Yes. My son loves you. He paid the price for your sins. He died on the cross for you. He rose in victory from death for you. That's the message that we hear every Sunday. And not as a broken record, but as a record of life. As a message that we constantly need to hear. Because every day, we need that repentance and we need the gospel. We need that strength and motivation. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's echoed again in Ephesians and other places where Paul is praying for us to grow in understanding who Jesus is as our Savior, the power that we have in him and the wisdom that we have in him. And those are the things that help us live our lives as followers of Jesus. And that comes from being, abiding, and remaining in God. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, that walk of a disciple, a 
follower of Jesus, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. You all remember Ephesians 2.10? We got eight and nine, that's pretty solid for us as Lutherans, and that's good. Those are the key ones. By grace, you can save through faith, how it works. The ten, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he has planted in advance that we should do them. Sanctification, walking, living with Jesus, walking as a disciple, walking in the works that he's laid out for us. Every day, he's got things for us to do, people for us to interact with us, a life to show and bear his fruit. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And how do we increase in the knowledge of God? By continuing to remain in his word. What was that? You know, meditate, morning, noon, night. Think about God's word. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. For all endurance and patience and joy. Giving thanks to the Father. And I love this. Who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. We're, we, we're disqualified from the get-go. And we can't qualify for our salvation with our works, even with our attempted discipleship, will not qualify us, right? But who qualifies us? God qualifies us by stepping into our shoes with faith, justifying us through faith that connects us to Jesus, who has qualified us. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that awesome gospel there? Transferred us from darkness. Notice he says uh, the domain of darkness. He transferred us to the kingdom of his son. He takes us, grabs us, Pulls us out of the darkness, drops us into the light, drops us into a relationship with our Savior Jesus, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. The ultimately, that's what it is to be follower, follower, follower of Jesus. A disciple is knowing who we are as forgiven children of God, and that empowers us as we are in his word to live a life that shows who we follow, that who is at work within us. So the Lord bless you as you continue walking as his disciples, walking in the light that he has brought us into, and, and continue to shine that light in a dark world.